Today is February 20th, 2025, and that means there is a new firmware update for the Prusa Mark IV. This has been a couple hundred hours of me printing at this point. I figure what I would also do is a full service of the entire printer. I'm going to start the printer off uh, with servicing by just changing the nozzle on it. Because that's something I think we are overdue for. I'm going to hold this point open here, move this one up, because I believe this part is just the detachable. And screw these two. Until the entire nozzle is now easily coming out. And here's a better angle, but basically I just unscrewed this one and also unscrewed this one. And now this should be a little bit loose. When this is a little bit loose, you can pull out this little bit here. And that's the first little bit out. And then the second little bit is After that is out as well, you can pretty much just pull the entire thing out. If you accidentally left it too low like I did over there, uh, what you could do is you could just spin both of these arms in the same direction, just very gently, and this will move the z-axis rather. Now you have your little nozzle completely done. Okay, so currently this is way too much plastic that's fused to the actual heat end, and that means I can't actually do anything about this. So what I'm gonna do instead is, I'm gonna do the good old trick of heating it up before we remove a lot more stuff. And I'm not gonna put everything back exactly where it was, I'm kind of just going to put it in place enough that the wheels here can catch it. So now it's kind of exactly how we found it, except this part is still completely open and the wires are not put into the right spots. That's completely fine because what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up and I'm just going to clean it a little bit before we actually remove the nozzle. I'm going to go over here and go to preheat into PETG, take a microfiber cloth and just put it across the entire field of it here. So right now what we're going to do is we're just going to wait for this to heat up a little bit. Even at 170 degrees, I'm getting a lot of the plastic off already, like that piece. Now, just because I know some of you in the comments are gonna comment this, yes, you could, instead of doing this, just use a heat gun. I'm not doing that right now just because my heat gun is currently on the fritz. I've scratched out pretty much as much as we could at the moment, and what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna use some tweezers to pull off some miscellaneous threads that I can see that the brushes aren't getting to. Okay, I think that is good enough. I got pretty much as much as I could out of that. Back to what we're doing, I'm just gonna go over here to preheat go to the very bottom, cool down, and we're gonna let it be. The nozzle is cooled down to 13 degrees Celsius, which is very, very low. It's still very cold, take this out, and ta-da, we are done with the nozzle. The area is already much cleaner than what we were before, but if you want, there is an optional step here where you can just clean it up a little bit more. If you bought the Prusa Mark IV from Prusa, you would have gotten these two tools that come with the unit, and they are really good for moving the nozzle. However, sometimes the nozzle itself is quite stubborn even with these two tools. If you did find yourself in a situation where the nozzle is really hard to remove, I would recommend stopping immediately and picking up a hex nut driver. I can't emphasize this enough, do not force using the metallic pieces to take the nozzle off. If you keep forcing it, you will find yourself in a situation like this, where all of the grip from the nozzle is gonna go and you will be stuck, needing to replace the entire heating unit. Now, just a quick tip about all of this is, if you wanna take this part out, it's actually rotating this way. So you wanna rotate it counterclockwise to remove the nozzle and clockwise to tighten the nozzle. So the way I remember this is counter to changer and clockwise, you know, just to tighten. Alrighty, that is step number one complete. We have the nozzle completely changed. And now I'm just gonna plug this back into here. That is step number one, nozzle change. We're gonna remove that piece of microfiber and place a new one down here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around and see whichever spot has a little bit of debris or dust and just clean it out as much as I can. And this portion, I'm not entirely sure it's supposed to be done anymore, but previously with the Mark III, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to apply just a tiny bit of WD-40 silicon grease. I believe the initial intention for this was to prevent rusting of the motors, but I never really ran into any issues that required this step. 
Feel free to comment down below whether you think this step is necessary or not. I'm not a pro, so I welcome the criticism. I'm gonna do just a quick minor spray here. The angle here isn't great, but what I can tell you is that I'm not spraying that directly into the crevice where the rods touch the motor. I'm actually spraying a couple centimeters above it just so it will leak down a little bit. After this is done, there is one last thing I do want to do. And this part is something I do think is actually worthwhile doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply just a little bit of machine oil towards some of the smooth rods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up all the way to around here, oil around here. And we're just going to use this microfiber towel to just kind of help it along. And that's all we're going to do for that. Another quick tip here, do not wipe too much of this away. We do want a little bit of a glistening surface on the rods so that the oil is still around to keep things moving smoothly. So Viva Cello here from the future, we're currently doing the self-test wizard kind of things. And at this point I realized that when I was recording, I recorded myself doing the oiling of this and that, but I forgot to show myself oiling this portion as well. So if you were following along, there are two more rods here that you also need to kind of clean up and use a bit of oil on. Okay, so we are now at the last portion of our thing. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this all the way to around here-ish. And once it's all around here, until it tells us the right sound. And if it is way too tight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to loosen this one, this one, and this one just a little bit. I'm not going to take the entire screw out, we're just going to loosen them a tiny bit. After that, there is a screw hidden right there. And this is the screw you want to adjust a little bit with. In case that wasn't clear, this is the one that actually adjusts the tension. I'm gonna turn this down just a tiny bit and let's try this again. That is just right. And with that completely right, we're gonna just tighten these screws once again. Now, of course, after finishing this one, we're pretty much done with the microfiber cloths. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come down over here and we're going to click on switch to Y axis belt. If I put this here, you can tell it's just a tiny bit on the tighter side. So I'm going to turn this over. Find this screw on the bottom. I'm going to turn that one just a little bit loose. That one is the tension lock. Just a close up on that one. What I'm currently doing is the belt is right over here and over here there is one screw. I basically just loosened this one a tiny bit and now I'm going to come over here to this screw. I'm just going to adjust this a tiny bit here. Uh, just a quick tip here. If you really want the best results from this one, I would recommend is use the hex key and just Gently dab the side. I think this is a pretty important point just because the app doesn't actually teach you how to pluck it. And because of that, there are wildly inconsistent ways of doing this. Using hex key is just a bit more consistent. Once you're satisfied with this, do not forget to re-tighten the tensioning screw at the back. And then move on to the next step. Okay, at this point, we are basically done with all of this, so that is all good. So I'm gonna go over and install the software onto the USB key and then also do a little bit of cleaning up. Okay, so we have the new firmware installed onto this USB. Now, I'm not going to go through every single step here. It is pretty self-explanatory on the website. All you really got to do here, though, is just go onto the website, find your printer, download the BBF file, and put that onto the flash drive, making sure there is no other BBF file in there either. And then you just turn on your machine and click flash. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to plug this in. And then we're going to turn on the printer, which I've already plugged in. It says firmware here is new available. Would you like to flash? Yes, flash. Now while it's finishing, just because I do have pretty good confidence it's gonna work, I'm just gonna put the enclosure back. Okay, and in no time at all, we put the enclosure back and also the flashing finish. That took around, I wanna say a minute. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to control and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to calibration and tests. We're just gonna do a quick fan test 
see that everything's still working. They don't really have a wizard anymore, but just clicking the first one and letting it go is kind of the wizard, so... If you're wondering what I mean by this, after you click on the fan test, it will calibrate, and when it's done calibrating, it'll ask you to continue, like here. If you click on continue, it'll just keep on running the other calibration tests moving forward. After that, just follow the instructions on the screen. It is honestly very self-explanatory. Okay, now it is all done and everything is completely finished with the setup and also the calibration. But here's the thing. This isn't part of the servicing. This is just me ranting because there's a particular part of my Prusa Mark IV that isn't working. I'm still getting no sound. So what the hell? This is an ongoing problem I still haven't found the solve for. One day the printer was working and the beeping was completely fine, and then the next day it just simply stopped working. And I have not found a single way to fix this yet. But anyhow, let's move on to the final step of the servicing. Let's see if the nozzle change was successful at least. And do this. To be honest, this is always the most nerve-wracking part of the entire process. There we go. Made me a little nervous, not gonna lie. But it's working. And with this, I'm just gonna go back here and we are going to print Aslan's wheel 2.0. Which is this. This keeps saying it's the wrong type of G-code even though I know it's not. It's loaded for PETG and it's currently got PETG going in there. But regardless, the machine is just a little funny lately. So, long story short, I still don't know why the sound is broken on my Mark IV. It kind of just stopped working at some point. I'm, I'm not sure if it's a hardware issue or if it's a software issue, but I'll have to figure it out at some point. But for now, let's just give this some time and see if it actually print. Just watching it print is kind of boring. I'm just gonna close this off a little bit and I'm going to come back in about five minutes and see how it fares. And five minutes later, we are... We're cooking. Everything looks like it's running smoothly. So, I guess that's it. First surface on the Mark IV completely done.